Hey, folks, welcome to Verified Investing. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at VerifiedInvestingCrypto.com, as well as VerifiedInvestingEducation.com. So in today's video, we're going to discuss how to find out when Bitcoin will finally bottom. In addition, we're going to look at the price point. So these are predictions that I am making based on technical factors, looking at history, understanding human psychology. All of these things help us arrive at the most likely, the highest probability end date for the bear market, or at least the pivot low, as well as the potential price point where Bitcoin will bottom. So what we're going to do right now is jump right into the charts, folks. And to do that, we're going to bring up the chart right here and take a look. So what we can see is this is the current chart of Bitcoin. What we're seeing here is a sideways consolidation move where we actually broke down. All right. So we've now broken down, which likely signals, as I've talked about previously, a target of 12 to 13,000. But believe it or not, that's just a stopping point. The ultimate low, we're going to look over and see how to arrive at that level. Now, to understand the methodology behind this prediction, we have to look at FTX's collapse and the similarities to Lehman Brothers. Okay, so Lehman Brothers obviously was a big bank collapse that occurred in 2008. To be precise, it occurred on September 15th. 2008. Now, why this is important, right, is because basically when you're looking at Lehman Brothers, you have to look at them being a major bank during the financial crisis. And here we are with a major exchange, one of the top exchanges going bankrupt as well. So there's this similarity, this thread in bear markets that occurs where these big players go bust that over leverage themselves. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the S&P 500, and look at when Lehman collapsed and how long did it take for the markets to bottom on the S&P 500 and then ultimately how much of a drop from that point did we get. So here we have it on, on September 15th. So here's September 15th right here. In fact, I will put an arrow right to that point. All right, so this right here is the 15th of September 2008. And again, that was when Lehman Brothers collapsed. Now, what we can clearly see is that this did not mark the bottom in the stock market. It was kind of the beginning of the end. And when I look at FTX's collapse, I look at that as the beginning of the final end pushdown before Bitcoin finally bottoms, right? It's the, it's the starting point of the last flush in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So what we can clearly see is we were trading right around 1200 to 1300 when it was announced. From that point on, we made our low in March of 2009 on the S&P 500 in the 600 range. So right there if you can if you conclude that the FTX is the Lehman Brothers of 2022, we know that we generally have approximately a 50% decline to go in Bitcoin from the beginning of that move to the downside on the FTX collapse. So that's right around 20,000, which puts us just a little bit below based on current levels of the breakdown, just below $10,000, right? So maybe around 9,000, give or take just a little bit. All right. In addition, how long did it take for all of the negativity and all the craziness to get out of the market from when Lehman was, when Lehman basically went bankrupt? And the answer is you go from September to March. So essentially mid-September, you go to, um, you have September to October, October, November, November, December, January, February to February, February to March, March to, and, and basically that's six months, right? To March. So it took about six months for the remaining negativity to cycle out of the US stock market until we put in a low pivot. Now, interestingly enough, you could say, okay, well, the Federal Reserve came out with stimulus and, and we saw obviously this kind of bottoming being put in. And, and you're like, and, and a lot of people would rightly say, well, how does that equate to a period where we have inflation and the Fed is very unlikely to come to the rescue in the next six months? Number one, I think that within about six months, you'll start hearing about an economy that is likely to force the Fed, maybe not in the first half of, 20, uh, of 2023, but in the second half, this, you will start to hear about the likelihood they will have to stimulate. Number two, 
I equate the Fed coming to the rescue in 09 and the bottom being put in on the S&P to regulation and transparency measures being put into effect. So essentially what I'm saying to you is that for crypto, they don't necessarily need the Fed to start printing again to get that bottom in place. Instead, what the crypto market is craving is transparency and regulation. Basically, open the books, show everything to the public, and that alone will draw big money in. Just like the Fed printing money in 09, that drew big money in at those lows and started to reverse the move up. So now we have a time frame, right? So we look at this and we say, okay, six months approximately and a drop of 50% in Bitcoin now, uh, um, or in the S&P, which would equate to Bitcoin. Now let's flip over to Bitcoin's chart right here, right? In fact, I'll go to this one. So basically what we're doing here is from the collapse, which was at a price right here, right? So really we want to use this trend line because this was the break point right here. So from this collapse, which was around 18,600, that's approximately 50% drawdown would bring us to around... 9,000 and change, right? Right around 9,000, we'll call it. All right, just a little bit below that that level uh, or a little bit above that level. So that's now your bogey target on Bitcoin. Now, in addition, what I think we should look at is we should go back to 2017 and notice that we had the same sort of sideways cycle and then a breakdown. And what's fascinating here is that if you look at this, this breakdown, so number one, this is freaky, right? So let's go back here. So number one, this low pivot in June to when we broke down was June to November and very sideways dead action. If you go back to 2017 or 2018, if you take this low here, it's almost identical. And it was June and the breakdown occurred in November. So all of a sudden we have this scenario where this is replicating where you have this fall. Now, if you look at this, right, where you have this fall and this bottoming period in crypto markets, in Bitcoin, this was from November, when? To April, or, or to, excuse me, to March. So, right, so November through March. Now, think about this, folks. How long is that? All right, November, December, January, February, March. It's, it's basically five to six months. Same thing as what we saw in the S&P, as well as what we're now expecting. So you see the similarities. This is fascinating price action, in my opinion. All right. So basically now we have the price point, the repetitive nature of Bitcoin. All right. We know what can get Bitcoin out of the doldrums, which will be regulation, which in all fairness with FTX, it's going to push forward on regulation and transparency measures because big money got burned. And let's be honest, if it wasn't big money, I don't know if regulation would be pushed forward as much as I think it will be. But my guess is we have a framework within three months and within six months, we do have regulation in the space, which again, should lead to a bottom in Bitcoin. Now let's talk about where we have a confluence of low pivots. So basically, we know that approximately a 50% drawdown from this breakpoint of FTX collapsing gets us to our equivalent of the Lehman Brothers collapse in the stock market. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look for a, a secondary factor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a trend line going back to the pre-run before 2017, connected through the 2018 lows and the March 2020 COVID collapse. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to take this trend line right here and put it through these lows, right? Low to this low to right here. And then what price point do we get? Right around 9,000 and change. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So that would draw us Bitcoin. That would draw Bitcoin back to that trend line, right? So again, here's the Bitcoin collapse. And if we zoom back here, and I bring this over so everyone can see, this trend line then brings us right to that target suggested from the S&P and the COVID, excuse me, and the 2008-2009 financial crisis, the time frame aligns, and now the price point aligns with a major technical trend line. So this is what I look for, folks. I mean, this is everything that I teach in the Winning Trader series, by the way, that you can go to Verified Investing Education. This is all what I showcase there. All right, the winning trader series, all of my techniques, my trend line drawing, how to do Fibonacci, all this kind of stuff. And it all comes together. And my point is, I wanted to do this video because I'm always interested in helping people understand how the confluence of events kind of coordinate with a major point in time as well as price. 
price and time are the two biggest factors in any single market. And also, it's important to recognize how history tends to repeat or at least rhyme. And the idea here is that human nature never changes, right? Greed and fear rule the markets. And so generally, past cycles will repeat over and over again because human nature is what's driving markets, right? Greed and fear. It's the underlying human emotion that's making people buy or sell crypto, buy or sell stocks, buy or sell commodities. And so ultimately, this helps get you into a point where you can say, okay, if this happened in the past and this is the result, it's very likely something very similar will occur in the future. So again, guys, my name, Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist, Pro Trader at uh, Verified Investing Crypto at verifiedinvestingeducation.com, as well as in the money stocks.com. And I hope you found this useful. Thank you guys so much.